here and welcome to my blog and this is altitude this is a continuation of the training that I'm getting to get my um, part 107 licensed to be a uh, commercial drone pilot and this is the uh, 2.2 lesson and it's part of back the airspace is again but it's not a through uh, G it is um, the definition of different airspaces as to their usage and we're talking prohibited and restricted areas uh, within those uh, airspace classifications so um, starting out with special use airspace uh, special use airspace or special areas of operation SAOs um, is the designation of airspace in which certain activities must be confined or where limitations must be imposed on aircraft operation that are not part of those activities so um, they're broken down <clears throat> into prohibited areas, restricted areas, warning areas, military ops or Mo, uh, Mo's, Mo, MOAS, uh, alert areas, military training routes, MTRs, and temporary flight restrictions, F. A, uh, TFRs, national security areas, NSAs, and controlled areas or CFA, uh, CFAs. Now, <clears throat> I'm just going to do abbreviated and prohibited areas. Prohibited areas contain um, as airspace. Of defined dimensions with with which the flight of aircraft is prohibited and um, such areas are established for security or other reasons associated with national welfare these areas are published in the Federal Register and are depicted on the aeronautical charts the altitude for the prohibited area is found in the VF our sectional tubular data and it's usually um, if you go to the FAA's website you can find that um, in this case a blue circle or try uh, or a triangle with hash marks is standing inside the circle and a prohibited airspace number identifier so you got a circle you got a circle and you got hash marks facing inside and then you got your uh, prohibited code in there and that takes care of that. I don't know it was that um, and that's how you how you know it gives you your altitude and off to the side um, you'll find that in the two tubular um, <clears throat> just a quick right over here is where your tubular data is going to be it's going to give you your number which is this one here and then the altitude in which is prohibited and then time of use and the contact agency that's in charge of that so you'll find that out to the side <clears throat> and then uh, you know going up prohibited areas prohibited areas contain aerospace uh, defined dimensions within which flight of aircraft is prohibited such areas are established for for security and other reasons associated with national welfare these areas are published in the Federal Register and are depicted on aeronautical charts the altitude for the prohibited area is found in the VFR sectional tubular data 
which is that square that I showed you earlier. And um, the, these areas are, uh, um, again, that was a circular, circular area. Circular area, blue lines with the, um, your uh, hash marks facing inside with the identifier of prohibited um, code. And then uh, you're able to go into uh, your altitude, time of use, and uh, controlling, controlling uh, co and contact agency. Next one is a restricted area, and those are areas where operation are hazardous to non-participating aircraft um, and contained and contain aerospace within the flight of aircraft while not wholly prohibited is subject to restrictions. Restricted area denotes the existence of unusual, often invisible hazards to aircraft. Artillery fire, aerial gunnery, or guided missiles. Uh, individuals must have authorization from the controlling agency prior to entering restricted airspace. Uh, airspace altitudes, and there be hours of effect, and controlling agency data are found also in the VFR sectional tubular. I don't think you really have any, anybody's going to be shooting down the drone, but you don't want to be flying in that area without permission. Um, that would be kind of... Uh, um, and that's identified by a thin, solid blue defined area with hash marks extending inside the area with a restricted airspace number and identifier. Um, and then you can go to your tubular data for the rest of the information. Contacting area, again, hours that's going to be used, um, altitude, and um, the actual code. And off there of that. you go, there's your picture there's your restricted area and then there's your code R3008 and that looks like B it's got B B and D on one A and D on another and C and D um, air spaces in another because it's broken down and uh, <coughs> it's gonna have that R which means Restricted. Now we go on to warning areas. Warning areas are airspace defined um, of defined dimension extending out to 12 nautical miles outward from the coast of the United States containing activity that may be hazardous to non-participating non aircraft. Warning areas are similar in nature to restricted areas. However, the United States government does not have sole jurisdiction over the airspace. Airspace, altitudes, hours in effect and controlling agency data are found in the VFR sectional tubular. Um, and that area is a solid blue line again defined with hash marks and inside uh, the area of the warning. Um, and of course the identifier is going to be a W with the uh, identifying codes. Um, it'll also be again in your tubular data. It's going to give you your altitudes. Um, BC, BC, uh, E and F uh, times continuous and who's in control of it. ABC again unlimited continuous and controlling. Um, and then uh, got your G space to 1300 feet continuous and again that is your um, uh, controlling controlling agency if you're in G again you don't have to call or get in touch with the uh, controlling area for that um, <clears throat> and next is the military ops areas uh, MOAS's, MOAS, MOAS, 
consists of airspace with defined vertical and lateral limits established for the purpose of separating certain military training activities from IFR traffic. However, MOAs, uh, MOAs is active. Pilots should contact the controlling agency for traffic advisories, uh, airspace altitudes, hours effect, and controlling agency. Again, it's data uh, is in your VFR section tubular data. And um, it's going to be tell you exactly what it is, altitudes and um, controlling. And the thing with military operations is, again, that's from the ground up. So uh, your drone is in, in danger when you're flying in these areas. And that's defined with a solid um, magenta line defined in the areas of hash marks extending again inside and the name of the uh, mo identifier real quick see your uh, magenta circle or square and then uh, it's going to give you your um, identifier which in this case is moody 2 north so uh, the uh, and again you find that in your uh, sectional tubular data. alert areas alert areas inform non-participating pilots of areas that may contain high volume of pilot training or unusual types of aerial activity airspace altitudes and hours again are uh, in effect and found in your tubular data uh, solid magenta line defined with the hash mark. Then inside the area with the number alert, which is an A, A, and then your number. And then in your tubular section, um, I'm going to give you altitude, and then you're going to get your um, uh, controlling areas. Measure alert status, and those, and then in the alert area, you do not need to contact um, the controlling control tower um, as long as you're flying in a G G area for your alerts. This one's the military training routes. Military training routes are used by military aircraft to maintain efficiency and tactical flying. And again, that's uh, these routes are usually established below 10,000 feet. And operation speeds in excess of 250 knots. So uh, you're going from the ground, also going from the ground up. So um, again, military training routes, MTRs, IRs, and VRs begin at the surface and may present a hazard to your drone. Um, the, uh, let's see, your um, IRs are usually above 1500 feet AGL and your VRs are usually um, no, uh, are under 1500 feet. So, gotta be, gotta be cautious here when flying in these areas. And you definitely want to get in touch with the controlling control tower and find out what's going on. And our last one is temporary flight restrictions. Uh, your flight, uh, flight data center, FDC, uh, notice to airmen. Notum is issued to designated designate at TFR. So your notum begins with the <coughs> phrase flight restrictions, <coughs> followed by the location <coughs> Jesus, of the temporary restriction, effective time period, areas defined, statue, 
statute miles and altitudes effective. The NOTAM also contains FAA coordination facility and telephone number, the reason for the restrictions and other information deemed appropriate. And we're talking uh, TFRs are established for many reasons and includes <coughs> protecting persons, property, and the air on the surface from existing intimate hazards, provide safe, uh, safe environment for operations and disaster relief aircraft, present, uh, prevent an unsafe congestion of sightseeing uh, and an in, of an incident, <coughs> um, uh, protect declared national disasters for humanitarian reasons in the state of Hawaii, protect the president, vice president, or public figures, it means you can't fly around the White House, uh, provide a safe effective and uh, space agency operations that's the TFR and the main thing about the NOTAM is you need it's really important that you um, be aware if there are flight temporary flight restrictions in your area um, so you can uh, um, you're gonna you're gonna look up that NOTAM you're also gonna you're gonna also be able to call one eight hundred weather brief, and they should, that that should tell you exactly what the restrictions are in your area. And I did notice when I did fly um, lately, my drone it will pop up on your um, it's gonna pop up on your um, iPad saying you do have a flight restriction and be aware. So um, that's all getting really, uh, really technical, and um, uh, the nice thing about it is now, you know, if you're if you're fl flying with, I know with the uh, DJI drones, uh, you're gonna get you're gonna get that update on your uh, iPad or your phone if you got it hooked up. In uh, my case, with the uh, uh, Mavic so. National Security Areas NS, uh, NSAs consists of airspace of defined vertical and lateral dimensions established at locations where there are requirements for increased security and safe of ground of uh, safety of ground facility flight in NSA may be temporarily prohibited and prohibitations are disseminated in a NOTAM. Pilots are requested to voluntarily avoid flying through these depleted areas. Again, it's voluntary, but guess what? Be a good idea. CFAs control firing areas. CFAs contain activity which is not conducted uh, in a controlled environment and could be hazardous to non-participating air, uh, non aircraft. The difference between a CFA and other special use airspace is the activity must be suspended when a spotter aircraft radar or other ground outlooking positions indicate an aircraft might be approaching the area um, the CFAs are not charted as they do not cause non-participating aircraft to change its flight path so um, there might be control firing areas but um, if whoever's in the operation spots the aircraft coming, they need to, they'll need stop so the air, other aircraft can proceed through the area. And the conclusion in this is other airspace areas. Other airspace areas is a general term for referring to the majority of the remaining airspace. It includes um, terminal radar service areas, TRSAs, Local airport advisory areas, <coughs> parachute jump, <coughs> aircraft operations, <laughs> excuse me, <coughs> jeez, <coughs> and published BFRs. <coughs> Man, and those different uh, areas are in the um, in this training, but I'm not gonna go through them. So, anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment. And definitely subscribe. 
and we will catch you on the next altitude.